State receives casket of former Governor General. Laws on income tax reviewed. And unanimous resolution to split Talisia open. This is National MTV News with Helen Sayer. Good evening and thanks for joining us for Friday's news. The West New Britain Provincial Assembly has unanimously passed a resolution on the split of Talisia Open electorate into two. The new electorate will be called Nakanai Open. This comes after the Electoral Boundary Commission visited Kimbe recently for a public hearing on objections to the review of its electoral boundaries. The West New Britain Provincial Assembly passed the resolution on Wednesday. This decision by the Assembly follows pressing calls to split Talasia electorate. Deputy Governor Joe Maipo tabled a bill on the floor of the Assembly to deliberate. For this House to acknowledge the Electoral Boundaries Commission work in conducting wider consultation with all stakeholders in the province. The Electoral Boundaries Commission has been instrumental in pushing for the province to have a third district up at the national uh, government level. Talasia District covers a huge landmass on the north coast of West New Britain. Following a second visit by the Electoral Boundary Commission earlier this week to Kimber for objections, the decision is now a step closer for the creation of a new electorate. Also to govern effectively the, uh, the largest district, uh, it is fair that uh, we give this additional electorate. And I will be appealing to all the leaders in parliament to support uh, this resolution. Uh, and this is purely being on a merit basis that Thalassia truly deserve this additional uh, district. The new electorate will be called Nakanai Open. This has been a agenda pushed by a united voice in the province. Governor Sassindran Mutuvel says a new electorate will help improve funding and better service delivery. And I would appeal to all the party leaders and also uh, all the parliamentarians, the 111 members of parliament, to support uh, the final recommendations coming out from uh, Electoral Boundaries Commission and uh, that West New Britain will be grateful for their support to create this additional electorate to uh, give a fair representation of our people and also to get their fair share of uh, uh, funding from national government. Jack Lopava, Jr. National MTV News. Water PNG will carry out two major water supplying projects in Bulolo and Kundiawa starting next month. This will be the first major project that will be carried out since the merging of Eda Ranu and Water PNG. The two projects cost over 40 million kina in total. Water is an essential need for people to sustain and maintain proper hygiene. Today was a historical day for the people of Bulolo and Kundiawa after years of suffering without proper water supply. Having six districts nearby, Kundiawa town has been suffering for 21 years. According to Kundiawa Gamborg MP William Onglo, the town supplies water to hospitals from the river. He says the signing of the project today is a relief. It's been a real struggle. I've tried to get water from Gaulus Down, but we couldn't come across the road. We come as far as the uh, high school. And this is, this is a momentous day for me and for my people. And I want to thank everyone that's been involved. And I'm proud to be here during the signing to see that we, we get this water back to our people. Speaking on behalf of Bulolo MP DDA CEO Joseph Paru, also echoed the district's state of having no proper water supply after so many years. According to Paru, Bulolo is an economic zone and water is a service that must run in the district. Water is our source of life. And with clean, healthy water, we will live longer and we will live a healthy life. On behalf of the people of Bulolo district and on behalf of my honorable member, Honorable Sam Basil, we welcome this Bulolo town water supply. It's a blessing for Bulolo today. During his keynote address, Minister for State Enterprise William Duma stated that such industrial areas must have good water supply to boost the country's economy. When our people see the existence of government services in those towns, there should be no reason for them to migrate to bigger cities. 
because all these services that they will need should be there. So those are the things that I feel as a government we need to continue to ensure that our people have access to those much needed services. The two projects will run for 12 months. Podivai National MTV News. Camp Abogi Ward in Papalealea on the outskirts of Port Moresby opened a mini market for the villagers yesterday. This is the first project to see its completion after the ward's establishment two years ago. The mini market will help generate some revenue for the ward itself. Kempa Bogi is the 15th ward in Lele village in the Hiri LLG. The ward saw its first project unveil yesterday. Thank you, Adana. Open. Since its establishment in 2019, the roadside market will stop for at least vendors who want to sit and sell their produce at a convenient place. Uh, before this market was built, the vendors, you know, most of, especially the women, they've been carrying the fish, uh, uh, walking up and down the road or maybe on the streets. Uh, we have like little you know, market; they was just selling them, you know, or even the food part here. So it was like not not healthy for human consumption. So we decided the councillor, our late councillor, decided to. Uh, build a market, which the market has been built now. The vendors will be charged from one kina to five kina to use the mini market. What Chairman Henao Kari believes the market will generate income for the ward to do other projects that will benefit the village. We are also trying to uh, maintain, do some maintenance on this main bridge, Lele main bridge, and also uh, put up the solar lights where there is no electricity power. So these are areas, you know, these are all in the pipeline and uh, we are looking forward to uh, carrying out all this. However, the ward chairman wants the villagers to take ownership. This ward or the, the Lele village as a whole must take ownership of this, this mini market, this building. All villages must take ownership. So in the long run, this market will uh, generate good money for the village. The market was named after the late ward councillor Dawre Noho, who passed early this year. Podivai, National MTV News. National MTV News continues after these short messages. Stay with us. Welcome back. Early this year, the country mourned the passing of its founding father, Grand Chief Sir Michael Somari, and before him, Sir Mekere Morauta. Today, the state received the casket of yet another political leader, former politician and former Governor General, the late Chief Sir Silas Atopare. The casket of the late Chief Sir Silas Atopare arrived on a chartered flight from Goroka and received at 12.40 p.m. today at the Jackson's International Airport. With the country's flags at half-mast and suing a state funeral procession. People turned up at Jackson's airport to witness the arrival of the late chief. The casket was accompanied by the late chief's two widows and immediate family members and received by the acting Prime Minister Sori Ewe. Minister for Urbanization and Housing in charge of funeral arrangements Justin Chichenko and the PNG Defence Force Commander Gilbert Toropo. Let me uh, salute this great man. and many fathers who have come before us and passed on. Chief Silas Otopare, coming from very humble beginning, making himself, making his way up in the system and being elected as a politician. It is in, indeed sad occasion for the nation that we slowly letting go, not only of great leaders, but history itself. These are people who have contributed to this nation. I want to salute all of them today as we welcome Chief Cesar Sotopare 
the second stop of his journey. He was then given a military Garawana ceremony. After formally receiving the casket by the acting prime minister on behalf of the state, the casket then departed for the government house. Governor-General Sir Bob Dadai received the casket to lay in state for two hours. Today, me receiving body blow late Governor-General, one time all family belonging, Mary belonging, Napigenini belonging, all family, extended family, who sat, you black come long as place, long Goroka, and Eastern Highlands. God, I'm missing out in a um, long time, long time. I'm also in my Ubla and Kissing Belly Sea. Mibla long here, long up man who's a big plan, Mama Stro. Me like talk, thank you. Long time, late sir, after Parry, Mr. Governor General, and Mr. Seven Country Blow, Mibla. And Mr. Seven Country go through. Also in attendance to pay his respect was Australian High Commissioner to PNG, His Excellency Jonathan Philp. At 3 p.m., the casket was later moved to the Port Mosby Funeral Home. The state funeral is set for Tuesday, 5th of October 2021 at the Sir Hubert Murray Stadium. The late Chief Sir Silas Atapare entered politics in the 1980s and served as the 7th Governor-General of Papua New Guinea from November 1997 to November 2003. In 1998, he was knighted by the Queen as a Knight Grand Cross of the Order of St. Michael and St. George. A highlight of his career is bringing order when violence and controversy marred the electoral process in PNG's oil and gas-rich Southern Highlands province in the 2002 national general elections. The late chief died at the age of 70 in his home in Goroka, Eastern Highlands province, during the 46th independence celebrations. Kilawani National MTV News. Meanwhile, the body of the late Sir Peter Luce will be flown into Port Moresby tomorrow to be prepared for a final farewell in two weeks' time. Member for Maprik John Simon announced this in a media conference this afternoon. He said Sir Peter was a founding father of the country and he deserves the full respect of a proper state farewell. Sir Peter passed away this morning in Maprik. He was 85 years old. One of our founding fathers, the, we call it the Quila Blo Maprikna, Quila Blo Pango Padina, Stroblo Manlo Isipik and Papua New Guinea is, has left us. Sir Peter has left us this morning eh, after a very short illness. He was at his village in Amuk and he felt a bit sick. They drove him all the way to Maprik. Before reaching Maprik, um, he sort of left us, and as soon as we reached Maprik Hospital, he was pronounced dead on arrival. We are making arrangements to bring his body down to Mosby. Uh, he's got his families, some families in Australia, and his grandchildren in Australia as well. And as soon as we get all the families up here, we will make announcements on funeral, uh, on the funeral service and the, and the, and the programs of his funeral. The body will be taken back to Maprik after that and it will be laid to rest in Maprik within the vicinity of the town. We have made arrangements and understanding with the family. That is before his passing on, before the independence celebration. We had a very good understanding with the family that St. Peter Luz will be laid to rest in town. So I'm appealing to other Maprik who are around who are seeing this. Suppose you just stop blowing him up, now you stop close to Mosby. You like, give me a stand up on time, now. Kiss your body, blow papa, I'm two o'clock tomorrow, but I come up with place Balus, Lord Jackson's. Lo close to long international site where all BIPs are coming along him. Uh, government, NAC, to all right. Lo show him respect, long papa. Now body by come, Lord Slahap. But I'm like, kiss him, now come straight long. Funeral home, and we will allow him to rest. Today, the body is in Maprik. Uh, when he passed on in the morning, 
we allowed the body to be taken back to his uh, to his house that's at Amuk and after lunch today they brought a body body back to Maprik and the body is now in Maprik town uh, at the resource center where my conference room office is it's got icons and things there so the body is kept there we've made arrangements with people to go help to uh, dust the funeral arrangements to go and treat the body make sure the body is okay and ready for the night uh, tomorrow la hap install la hap body come down on yeah And now looking at the NAS fund market report, the Kina opened unchanged at 0 0.2850 US dollars in the interbank market this morning. At Bank South Pacific, your Kina will buy 0.2775 US dollars, 0 0.3800 Australian dollars, 0.2316 Euro and 30.28 Japanese yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York close, gold is trading lower, coffee higher, cocoa closed lower, copra closed higher. Crude oil is trading lower, palm oil and copper closed higher. And on the stock market, the Dow Jones closed lower, the ASX 200 is trading lower and the Old Ordinaries is trading lower. Chukai Sports is next. All the details after the break. Chukai Sports. The Papua New Guinea Football Association is urging all the players and staff in their competition to get vaccinated. PNGFA yesterday announced the postponing of NSL matches due to the recent surge in the COVID-19 Delta variant. Staff and players have been encouraged to get vaccinated. The Papua New Guinea Football Association is urging all its teams and competitions to vaccinate against the COVID-19 pandemic. Staff at the PNGFA office are all being urged to vaccinate. President and our CEO, plus a couple of our heads of department, have already gone out to get the, the vaccination. Okay. And so the message down to some of us who have not yet gotten vaccinated yeah. is to go and get vaccinated, mm. especially for the PNGFA staff. It, it has become now um, a measure that we have to follow the example that has already sure. been set by our president, Mr. Nato. For teams to travel overseas, especially the national side, all players and officials will have to be vaccinated. As for us, the staff, we will all get vaccinated. Mm. For the players, those that are in the national team or will be appointed in the national team, yeah. they have no choice mm. but to also get vaccinated together with the traveling officials. Yeah. The PNGFA is urging the teams in the National Soccer League to vaccinate as well so that restrictions can be eased for the competition to return to the field of play. Currently, the Kumul Petroleum National Soccer League competition is on the sidelines waiting for the controller's approval to return to competition. Um, for the clubs, well, as we can see, this measure that has now come into effect as of today, yeah. it's a result of PNG not getting the vaccination that is required. Huh? Mm. So. My message to all my teams yep. and the players and officials is please get vaccinated. Let us help this country and football bring the vaccination number up, yep. the rate goes up. And so this kind of uh, measures that are now currently in place for mm. a month yep. will not come back again. So we need to help ourselves. Fidelis Sukina, Trukai Sports. And that ends Trukai Sports. The weather details coming up next. True Kai Sports. This weather update is proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always.
A look at the weather forecast in the southern region. Cloudy with some showers and thunderstorms in Port Moresby. Cloudy with a shower or two in Daru, Kerama, Alatau and Popandita. In the Mamasa region, cloudy with a shower or two in Leh. Cloudy with some showers and possible thunderstorms in Medang Wiwak and cloudy with a few showers in Vanimo. In the New Guinea Islands region, cloudy with some showers and possible thunderstorms right across the region in Lorengau, KVN, Kokopo, Rabaul, Kimbe and Buka. And in the Highlands region, cloudy with rain showers and possible thunderstorms tonight, then morning fog in Mount Hagen. And cloudy with rain showers tonight, then morning fog in Goroka, Kundiawa, Mindi and Twabeg. The weather update was proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. And that's been the news, sport and weather for today, Friday, 1st of October 2021. Until next time, pleasant viewing, be safe and good night.